Hello everybody and welcome back to All That Jess. How are you? Could you be? Could you be? <laughs> One question that I get asked a lot is how to save money for traveling. So I have written down my kind of top tips for saving money. I have used all of these tips before and they have worked every single time. They're really simple, really easy, just little changes that can save you a whole lot of money. There is a possibility that these tips will change your life. Just just get ready. <laughs> the first tip I have is to learn how to say no. This can be a little bit tricky for people <laughs> and it definitely takes some determination to do this. I'll give you an example of something that happened to me recently. I was in pennies in Ireland and I picked up loads of bits. When you're walking around pennies it's like impossible not to pick up everything. Everything is so cheap that you're just like oh I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll get this. <laughs> but at the end I had loads of clothes hanging over my arm and I said okay hold on a second. Do I really need all of this? And that is the most important question that you can ask yourself. Do I really need this? Am I gonna wear this? Am I gonna eat this? You know, it's just asking yourself a question. So when you get to the till and you're just about to pay, just have a, have a second look at what you've picked up and go, am I really gonna use this? Do I need this? Chances are you probably don't. On my trip to Penny's, I ended up putting like a top back, I had a hat and I was like, I'm never gonna wear that hat, I'll just put it back. And then bada bing, bada boom, I'd ended up saving, I think it was like 15 or 20 euro, like 20 euro. That is a lot when you think about it. Another tip that I have that's kind of in connection with this tip is when you are shopping and you ask yourself, do I really need this? You can also ask yourself, do I really need this or will I prefer to go traveling? And if the answer is yes, which it most likely will be, put it back, save the money. It's really, really easy. So the next tip is cut out the extras even just for a little while. So what this means is, a lot of us are spending money on the gym or the cinema or going out and drinking and going out to nightclubs and stuff like that. You would be surprised at how much money you actually spend on those things. If you really do want to go traveling, it would be a good idea to cut out those things for a short amount of time. Those little extras, those little luxuries, when you add them all up, they actually come to a quite a large amount of money. So if you were to say, okay, for the next month, I'm gonna chill out a little bit, uh, instead of going to the gym, I'm going to go for a run around my city or instead of going out to a nightclub, I'm going to invite my friends around to my house instead. This can be hard for some people because I know we all love our luxuries in life but at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that if you want to travel, you have to sacrifice a few little tiny things along the way. My next tip is to set up a savings account. So basically what I mean by this is that if you are currently working and your employer is putting money into your account automatically, you can also set up another account uh, that is your savings account. So every time money comes into your account, you can set it up to automatically, let's say 10% or even 5% of that money comes out and into a different account that you don't take money from. When this money is going into the savings account automatically, you will actually surprise yourself as to how much money you're saving because you barely even notice that the money is gone in the first place. And then every time your employer pays you, your savings account is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and you didn't even notice because you, di you didn't have to put it in there yourself. It's going in automatically. Win, win, win. <laughs> this next one is a little bit weird. I think my friend gave me this idea years and years and years ago. Basically what you do is you have a money bank in your room. So I'll just show you mine. This is a weird one. So this is my money bank. It is not a money bank. It is just a really large box of Maltesers that I finished. <laughs> and basically what I do is every time that I'm cleaning my room or I put my hand in my pocket and I see, oh, there's some change in there, some coins in there. I take it and I put it in here. <laughs> I just started this one like at Christmas time. And you can hear it's, it's, it's building up, you know, the money is building up in there. What I would recommend is that every time you have change in your pockets, that could be five cent, 10 cent, two euro or two reais in Brazil, <laughs> uh, five reais, 10 reais. Every time that you have just change, coins floating around your room or in your pockets or in your bag, just throw them into your money bank. A few months down the line, you're gonna open up your money bank and you're gonna feel rich. <laughs> I did this for about three months and um, every time I had some spare change, put it in my money bank and after three months I came back and I had 120 euros in my money bank, just in coins, just in coins. Like I didn't even realize how many coins I had around my room or I was actually shocked at how much it all added up to. And so 120 euros, 
I think that's like 360 reais or something like that, 360 reais. Realistically, this money bank technique probably won't buy you a trip to Ireland anytime soon, but it will get you a trip from Ireland to France or from Ireland to Spain, England, anywhere. So it is worth it. My next tip for saving money is to keep track of your finances and this is one that I need to work on a little bit more. There are loads of different ways that you can do this. There are many apps that you can download to keep track of your finances but basically the whole point of it is that when you keep track of your finances you know exactly where your money is going and where you're spending the money. For like a space of about one or two months I kind of kept track of my finances and kept track of where my money was going and I realised, oh shit! <laughs> I'm spending an awful lot of money on lunch. From that then, I was able to go, okay, well then, I need to cut this down. If I wanna go traveling, I need to cut this down big time. I decided to start bringing my lunches into work and that saved me so much money. Just little, these little things are gonna save you so much money. <laughs> Now the last tip I have is actually about earning more money. Now it's not as hard as it sounds and it's something that I just thought about yesterday which was using the skills that you have to earn more cash. So basically I work for an event management company but a skill that I have on the side is my photography. I always use photography as a way of earning more money. I do little odd jobs around the place like I I do photo shoots and I do uh, I photograph events and weddings and stuff like that. And on top of the income that I get from my day job, I'm earning money from my photography on the side and it makes a huge difference. So if you have a skill, and I think that everybody has a skill, everybody has a skill that you can earn money from. Um, it can be anything from photography or it could be music, you could teach music lessons if you, you could teach English, you could teach Portuguese, uh, you could cut people's grass, <laughs> you could. Uh, a big one in Ireland is that we babysit so we mind other people's kids. There are these kind of little jobs that you can do um, whenever you get a chance that are going to earn you a lot of money. So these are just the kind of little things that you can do to save a lot of money to come traveling. If you have any other ideas and tips on how to save money please comment the Kimbasho. I think it's one of the hardest things about traveling is saving money to keep going. But these are just a few tips that I know are going to help you so so much. Just before I go guys there is one last thing that I wanted to mention. Over the Christmas break I've gotten a few mails from people asking me why I haven't accepted them on Facebook. I'm really really sorry guys I don't want to seem rude or mean by not accepting you on Facebook. It is purely because I have gotten hundreds and hundreds of friend requests on Facebook. I literally feel like my entire news feed is in Portuguese. I don't understand anything. <laughs> if I accept some of you, I have to accept all of you. And if I accept all of you, then I literally will not understand a word in my Facebook homepage. <laughs> so I hope you understand, guys. I do, however, have my own Facebook fan page and that is the Gap Year Guru Facebook page. I have a link down below in the description box if you would like to follow along. I love, 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 love connecting with you guys on there. And that is where I post about all of my travels and my blogs, my videos and stuff like that. So I would absolutely adore for you guys to connect with me on there. Again, I'm really sorry that I can't accept you on Facebook. I hope you understand. <laughs> If you have any other ideas for me, for my videos, I would love to know. Comment aqui em baixo. Obrigado. <laughs> I will see you again next week, guys. Beijo, tchau.